welcome to UK GK TV. I'm Bill Voice, and this is my good friend Dave Nicholson. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm fine. I, I, a bit I, rough today, mate. I am <laughs> not hungover because I don't get hungover, but I'm feeling a little bit worse for wear. So bear with us, guys. So bear with me because <laughs> I was 60 this week, and despite saying I didn't want any uh, surprises, I ended up with three of them. So uh, I've, I've struggled a bit now. I lift it large. Let's put it this way: I lift yeah. it large. I made the mistake that older guys do is they think I'm going to be sensible and stop drinking. Yeah. But I stopped drinking so early that I ended up with the morning after headache the night That'd before. before. Things that and, you uh, used to do all night, you take yeah. all night to do. Oh now. yeah. Now yeah. it takes you all night to do all night. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah. So I'm I'm feeling a bit a uh, bit, bit fragile. Rogue, a bit fragile. But you know, I'm 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 a lucky guy, you know, and I've got loads of mates, and I've got still got a bit of family left, and they they came to see me yesterday, and I, I think it was great, and I, I no complaints there, of course. Sixty, sixty, six big six oh mate, big sixty. Uh, but Where I it think, go, Bill? Where does well, it go? I was saying earlier, I turned round when I was forty, and the, and the the, the 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 preceding twenty years have just disappeared. I can't even remember them. No, but not in a good way. Do you see yourself <laughs> at sixty? Sorry? You see yourself? No. No. I'm still 20 in my head. Still 21. Until you try to get out of bed. Until so I try to get out of bed. Or, or, or put your shoes or, on. Or lift myself up off the garden when I fell over the other day. Or put your shoes on. <laughs> or put my shoes on. <laughs> yeah, all those creaky things, yeah. And one thing I notice is yeah. that when you're talking to people about things, you turn into your dad, don't you? Oh, yeah. Well, I've seen my dad in the middle looking back at me several times recently. It thinking, it, yeah. In my day... In my day, yeah. it, it was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I bet yeah. you. <laughs> I've stopped listening to modern music as well. I yeah. only listen to stuff that is like twenty years old. I think. I... I think twenty years ago. I think Nirvana. I still think of Nirvana as modern music. <laughs> I bet you, if I asked you a question now, oh. a learned guy like you, oh, you wouldn't on. know. Go What's on. number one in the charts? I don't know. There you go. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, What's the name? Answers in the comments <laughs> below. Uh, no, isn't it Beyonce's country no western idea. album or mate, something? I don't no know. Idea. I don't know. No you idea. know what? No idea. <laughs> idea. No idea, mate. No idea. Yeah. And that's why the hobby is important. Cause... That's why the hobby is because that's I still care about the hobby. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. <laughs> but the people that are into it, we're all getting old. We are getting old, but I think recently I've seen younger people. Uh, around quite a lot of younger people around. Little Tom that comes. Seen Tom coming here. I've seen guys at the with guys and dads sure. and lads at the show yeah, and, and stuff great. like that. It's so, great. so I don't I don't think this is I don't think it's going to die with us. No, I no. think I think it's going to go on. We're so not that yeah. important. We're not that no. important, are we? <laughs> no, uh, but well, we've got got some new releases. We have we got some new uh, stuff. which we're going to have a look at now. Some really good stuff. Then we're going to look at box art and instructions and the, the basic question you're going to ask me. The importance of box art and instructions. Is it, is it, important, is it important or just a selling just, gimmick? Mm, yeah. I mean, there's a philosophy behind it, but uh, uh, let's let's do the new releases first because that's, that's the... That's Over the to you, Bill. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, uh, th this is... Uh, this is Jigsaw, isn't it? And it's by Paul Willits. And as you can see, it's the, the, the sort of sinister dummy from the, the movie... It's in three parts, isn't it? It's three parts, yeah. You've got the, the chin, which is the, like the ventriloquist mouth. But if you look at the texture of the surface, Paul has, has captured it spot on. The hair's incredible, but the actual surface of the actual face itself looks like the a dummy, puppet, doesn't it? One of them it, old puppets. It looks like a, a ventriloquist dummy, doesn't it? One of those mm. like... Oh, do you remember you used to get one for Christmas when you were a kid? Yeah, that granddad thing. Granddad thing. It's very sinister. Uh, but things like that tend to be puppets and dolls and clowns, but puppets and dolls, as you can see, the whole thing fits together. It's nice and chunky. It's a nice piece of resin. Uh, it, you know, one of these things, it, it, there's two ways you can go with this. You can either think it's a, it's a really simple kit. You don't have to put too much time into it. Or you can actually go to town on it and get a really good finish on it, can't yeah. you? I was thinking yeah. of getting a base done, but base. I'm not sure. Does it need a base, do you think? Well, what, what would the base look like? I don't know. I'm mm -hmm. just thinking a nice base that will cut, that will sort of tie it Set in. Set it off at the back. Yeah, yeah. maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe not, yeah. maybe not. But yeah. it, that's that's Paul Willits' latest. But yeah, it, it's a, and it's a, it's a nice chunk of resin. Yeah, it's uh, and obviously, it's with, with it being Paul, it, it's got like a... Beautiful sculptural detail. It's I like very turn the head on it. This one, yeah. I like how the head turns. Yeah, like the, yeah like... it will actually. I suppose you could leave it loose and position. Yeah, what you want, can you? So it's a good one. That one is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. one's by Paul. That's Have you Paul. seen that? The guys are talking about. Um, I mean, you, you, what, you, you watch your films, don't yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've been. They've all been talking about this uh, film that's meant to be the scariest horror film that's ever been made. Apparently, hmm. it's uh, the tractor. Have you heard about? Have you heard of it? No. 
not heard about El Chapo. Come on, I can feel as a joke. No, 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 no. I've not seen it, but I've no. seen the trailer. I saw a film once called The Tire. Oh, you missed it. The Tire? Have you seen The Tire? No. It's about a, a runaway tire that falls off a car and kills loads of people. No, I haven't it? seen that. Yeah? No, I don't know. This is, this the is tractor? It. No, no, no. I've no. not seen it, but I've seen the trailer. All right. Oh. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Go yeah. Uh, on the way to work tomorrow, it's Cheshire. I'm bound to see the trailer. You're as bound well, to see it? the trailer tomorrow. And this is Andy's, isn't it? And this, this is, is the latest this is one. The latest one from Andy. And as you can see, it fit up. It finishes off the trio, doesn't it? That's the last one in the series. Yeah, it does. Yeah. That's Hooper. That's Hooper. Richard Dreyfus, as you can see, absolutely fantastic likeness there. And uh, it, uh, it's a 3D print original one, isn't it? It's the Masters in the Masters 3D. 3D. Yeah. But as you can see, we've got the characteristic base with the floats. But each of the different bases with it, which of the different figures yeah. comes with different uh, accessories. Yeah. This one's particularly good because if anybody can recognise what this is, this is the actual shark's tooth. Isn't the it? shark's jaw. It's the only solid piece of the shark. Sharks are cartilaginous fishes, apparently. They don't have a skeleton. They have oh, a right. cartilaginous skeleton. The only bit of their skeleton which is made out of a piece of bone is their actual jaws. So when you find a fossil shark, you normally find the jaws and the teeth. You don't find anything else. Right. So, so that's that goes on the base. But as you can see, it's a lovely little three D print. That it's so delicate. Yeah, that one comes. It's you, almost translucent. Isn't yeah, that it? one. That one basically. You get, that one's the only part that's three D printed on this right. one. And the glasses. And the glasses. Let me show you the glasses because it's well worth having a look. As you can see, there's the glasses. A pair of uh, vintage Ray Bans. And the other one. Which uh, and the other. And the other. Fit jaws. neatly onto the nose, and there's a couple of. Little locating, little holes. locating pins there, so they'll go. That'll go straight on. So that's lovely. But the actual kit itself is going to be a nice chunk of resin, isn't it? It is. And with the other, the other two yeah. on the Brody base is the the sign for the beach, for the beach, yeah. beach, and then on the quint is the can of beer, can of beer, the beer can and stuff. Yeah. So when you got these together, all three of them, yeah, they make a lovely little shelf display, don't they? They do. So they I do. think we're just waiting for the shark, aren't we? Well. There's rumours that there's, a, there's, there's going to be a special shark right, thing coming. Right, right, okay. There's rumours now that people, since the pop, since these have been so popular, mm -hmm. um, there's a couple of guys talking to me about projects that yeah. involve the shark. But um, we'll see. Well, it's going to be a special one. Yeah, if but it, it's like a lot of Andy's work, there's plenty of detail in there to get Superb. to grips with, isn't it? I think you can spend it took Andy. It, Andy basically was fanatical about the likeness on this. Yeah. So basically, he's gone away and done it, and then come back and said, "No, I'm not happy, again. and I don't yeah. like it." And this, I finally settled on this one, which I think yeah, is it's very good. To be honest, the last one he gave me, I thought was great, but this one just goes to another level. So his likenesses are fantastic. I, I mean, what I like about that, if you look at it, you can see that what he's worked from. If you look at the eyebrows, they're not just duplicated eyebrows. Each, they're actually separate. The eyebrows, which give the give the character a lot of sort of. You know, character. It's, it's character. Yeah, you can see that they're individually done, and there's uh, and the hair as well around the hat. Yeah, his hair. I mean, his work really on the hair is really pretty good. Excellent, that, you know. Well, this one's available uh, from next week. Right. So. Um, so that one, that one is is going to be available. Hopefully, that if you bought the other two, then this will finish your set off for you. Uh, I'm sure there it is. That's the one. Perfect, isn't it? Perfect. Yeah, it fits nicely in with desert. There it is. Look at that. The specs, absolutely lovely. 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 It, it's just great to have the three of them that together now because I know when because he's absolutely consistently obsessive about the likeness, isn't oh, he? God, yeah. So you know it, it does because he, he'll he'll bring it in. You'll say, "Oh, it's great," and he'll say, "Yeah, I'm not quite happy with it." I've had him come. I've had yeah, Andy come here yeah. with something, and he's fetched it. And then he said, there, Dave, and I've looked at it and, and signed it off. And then he's got home and he's gone, no, Dave, no, put that in the bin. Yeah, I've we'll had him do that. Again. I've had him do that numerous yeah. times. And you're going, Andy, it's looked great. And he's going, no, I, want it. I can get it better. So he's basically, uh, he basically, he's fanatical about it. He's yeah, fanatical. yeah. And you, you get what you, you know, you, you, the, the all three of them together would be great on the shelf. I you? think so. Yeah. It's a must have, in it? There's a little segment later on, guys, which we're pleased, which we're pleased to be involved in, and it's a new guy, a new sculptor on the block. Now, this guy is a new guy, he's a young lad, and I strongly believe that we should encourage these new people to sculpt, and it's his first venture into sculpting, and it's going to be announced later on in this video, hopefully. 
Uh, we've got production rights to do it in the UK. Very, very pleased. He's a really smashing guy, so I want to show you all of him a bit of love. I'm not going to say any more. I'm not going to spoil any surprises for anybody. But we've got the guy on later to announce it. He's going to show it. It's a really nice piece, and I'm happy. I'm really pleased that the guy, you know, cracks on and gets gets good with it. Going on to the show. The show is definitely happening. The post is well underway. Yep. I'll be pleased to tell everybody that's going to attend the clo the show that we've had more, quite a few more, pe quite a few more people, different people asking for display tables. Right. So right. there's going to be a, more, a, a quite a massive. This time it's going to be really well attended with display units. Obviously, your usual guys, the brush men, the base men, myself, all the other dealers are still going to be there. But we've now, for some reason, Bill, we've in, we seems to be more interested in displaying this year again, which well, is good. It's good it's because I think people had a lot of time to do work, didn't they, over the last couple of years with COVID and stuff. It means yeah. you've got a lot of good stuff that is yet to be viewed, really. I think, yeah. I think that's probably why. There's a lot of people, yeah. this year I've had a lot of inquiries about display tables, so that's going to pay a big part of it this year. So you're going to have to still... still your bulk of dealers that you've had yeah, and yeah. a few more extra ones but you're going to have more display so it's something nice to look at whether it's because it's all in the same room I'm not sure so watch this space so there was a gentleman that messaged me before about there's a show happening it is definitely happening it's September the 28th bear with us guys it's coming up soon I've, I, you know I'll t I can't tell you the story about the poster I will do after it's done but <laughs> there's always a story so we'll talk about that Bill loves his poster I love the poster story so but, after the last video yeah, that we yeah. did me and you I've had quite a few people contacting us about your obsession with box art and and, it, yeah, and, I, and yeah. illustrations uh, in suction sheets I, well, so it, today we're going to have a 10-15 minutes yeah, about that yeah, cause what's I, your opinion well my opinion is because I I, do, I make kits rather than sculpts mm -hmm. so most of my the stuff I release has got 9 or 10 pieces yeah now obviously most because because it says on the box for an uh, experienced modeler mm -hmm. most of you could probably just get the five, the, the 9 or 10 pieces out and know exactly where to go mm. And I think to get to an extent with garage kits and resin kits, you've got a little bit of leeway how you put the limbs yeah. and stuff because it's up to you. You're certainly how you're going to imagine the kit. Mm -hmm. But I like to include box art because I want to create a sort of vintage feel. So you're for going for the kit. vintage look, are you? So I go for the vintage look. I, I normally, I try, I have a copy old Airfix or old Aurora and do my box art like based on those formats so you kind of mimic that to so it. kind of mimic that to get so when that when that because a lot of people are buying my kids don't i don't think build them i think a lot of them just collect them oh, that's good. Uh, so you know so 50 percent build them 50 percent keep them because they haven't got the room some people and they yeah. just they just like particularly with dinosaur kids so i always put in a really detailed set of instructions because i think it's for me I think I do it because I like it. Because I loved when I was a kid, I used to get the Aurora boxes, open the Aurora boxes, and you get out, there'd be the instructions. Then there'd be a little flyer in there with what other kits were yeah. available. Yeah. And it would just bring about when I was a kid, a nice I would experience. obsess over them. Mm. And I'd say, what, this is the one I'm going to get next. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. Also available. So in, in American boxes, you used to get all that. In English boxes, it wasn't the same. You used to get the catalogues, didn't you? You used the old yeah. Airfix catalogue and go through and tick them off. But uh, in the instructions, like, say, for, uh, I don't know, the, the Wolfman kit, mm. there'd be, like, a little thing with the Dracula kit, the Mummy kit, yeah. King Kong, Godzilla. Yeah. And you'd say, yeah, I want them. And you'd keep them. And they, that would be all part of the fun. Do you keep all your box covers? I do. So yeah, because I, I, I keep my box covers for my kits I build. Because if I build a kit, that's probably going to be a vintage. What I do is I carefully undo the seam with a scalpel, and flat them out. Yeah. Put them in a folder. I love it. I can't I can't throw it away. If I've got a sort of like fifty year old Aurora box. Yeah. I don't want to put it in the bin. I, I'm, I'm, what? Where does where does this stop? Though I mean, we, we're now seeing an increased. Number, I mean, from a garage kit producer, mm -hmm. we did it with the Ray Ariosen. And to be honest, I'll, I'll explain something to you. In the garage kit industry, when I first started, nobody did that. Nobody mm. did. But, but one person that I know started started doing box, you know, box covers. Okay. Yeah. And you'll be you'll be surprised to see thirty years ago, oh. the first person to, put, in, to put the instruction sheet in the box um. was ourselves. 
There you go. There you go. So that was and basically. Th- this is this, oh, is, this, this that's is the original uh, Nero Max. Yeah, isn't that it? was my yeah. first kit. So yeah. basically, what we did is years ago we did the first instruction sheet. Yeah. So that illustration done was done by Joe Bailey. We did mm. we did this. So it was kind of we kind of did started it thirty years ago over here. But if you look here, Bill's got now that's Joe Bailey, isn't it? That's an original Joe. Pen that's the pen sketch. But you only have to look at it. I took one mo- one look at this and I knew exactly exactly who it was and what it was from. And it's Michael Douglas from Falling Down. Yeah. And mm. uh, okay, if you got that kit, you could probably put it together dead easy. Oh, a dead piece of cake. But it's so nice to have that. Yeah. See how we envisage it because a lot of the time these things, when you're actually doing the sculpt, you have to sometimes you have to cut the sculpt up mm-hmm. to make it castable. Yeah. And I think if you've got something like Joe, who's like really knows his stuff, and he works in the pottery industry as well. Mm-hmm. So working in a pottery industry, when you do figures, you you have to imagine how the figure's going to be divided up into the separate molds and slip cast and then pasted back together with slip. So I think Joe's like has worked in the pottery industry for so long that he knows exactly like that. So if you buy a lovely little Staffordshire figurine of a woman in a, flan- a fancy dress or or a, a cart or sort of Staffordshire bull terrier, there's a good chance that it's gonna it comes out of the molds in this way and then people just stick it all together with with slip clay and then it goes off to get fired and stuff so something like that that shows you the actual thinking process behind the actual manufacture of the kit i just love that it's great it's great because what we decided to do is we did this because we were probably uh as yourself we were looking at the old kits and uh, the American style kits, mm-hmm. which fetches us on to the next piece. Yeah. But my point is, we went for about 10 of these kits, and I'll show you some original killer kits box covers going through the years. Um, and we decided in the end that people weren't really bothered. Do you, I used to say to them, do you want the kit to, to be, to, to, to progress like this, yeah. which I'll show you yeah. shortly, or do you just want the kit? And most people said the, the feedback we got was, we just want the kit. I think if the builder, I think most of the people that do this kind of modeling are builders. So they're not collectors. So they're not necessarily collectors. Mm-hmm. But I think collectors who collect kits and build, but mainly collect, I think they're the people that just, they, they, the that's covers. Where, where the box covers come from. Well, it's the same with the Ariausen. Yeah. We decided to yeah. go back to our roots with the Ray Ariausen tribute mm. and put like a nice certificate and a box cover yeah. and a nice yeah. box. And it sold yeah. out. The general feeling I get off people is, no, we're not bothered. Just put it in a brown box, wrap it in newspaper, wrap yeah, it in yeah, whatever yeah. you want. Uh, but yeah. this goes over to the well, American. Th- this, th- the thing is, you see, what what I, I when I started off as a teenager, one of the things I wanted to do was a magazine, and I wanted to do a, a fanzine. Yeah. And I, I did. I did. I remember me and my mates getting together and do these photocopied fanzines. And this is a this is kind of a, a an underground sort of fanzine style thing. And it's a vampire lover's kit, isn't it? And what, what it is actually is it's this in the middle. You can see that it's Peter Cushing holding up, uh, yeah. what's her name's head? Ingrid, Pitt, Ingrid Pitt's it? head, yeah, Ingrid Pitt from the vampire lovers. That's Ing- Ingrid Pitt. And uh, there she is asleep in her coffin. And uh, yeah, you can see at, it's, a, the artwork it's, 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 a, it's a lovely bit of work because it's a combination of what probably would be very simple desktop published stuff with some hand drawn stuff on top of it looks great it looks great and that and that's it that's the underground magazine look yeah so basically that was when it to me that was when it had a raw sort of edgy Mm. feel Mm. and then what i see i like that i mean i even like the fact that the color's different i think that's really really nice yeah there's a there's a painting list here a painting list now you might say well why has anybody put a painting list well in the days of I mean, modern technology makes color printing dead cheap yeah. so you can have a color box now or a color photograph in the box to show as an imaginary sort of thing but back in the day when instructions were black deal. and white it was expensive wasn't it? yeah it was too expensive so you did include this. that you include all, the paint list i love all this it? artwork yeah. this it's lovely and it's a lovely bit of gothic isn't it yeah it's absolutely which takes us on to yeah. this one basically with killer kits we, we continued mm-hmm. and then we did a basically we decided we were going to uh, move over to the other uh, other side, basically of of the design for the boxes. So we've got a gentleman called Neil Harvey that came along, and that's the first digital done digitally. He he did all that on a, on the computer. So that was one of our first ones that we went over digitally. And to be fair, it's a great concept, but 
I, I, we were never happy, me and Neil were. We, we liked it, but we, we wanted to strive to get it forward. Mm -hmm. So Neil, yeah. was, Neil for, for us, was moving it into the digital technology. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and basically what we did then is, which is to me my favourite, look at that one. Oh, so look at that. <laughs> Blood. And Kelly Kitts presents Blood. That's lovely. That's and lovely. you've got the Nosferatu. Now, Neil designed these and he yeah. did the graphics on it. To me, that... that it's a mini poster. That's that, I love that. Yeah, it's a mini I, poster. I absolutely yeah. love that. Yeah. That was my vision for the box yeah. covers. Obviously, that was how I... Bright colours. I I, me, as, as the owner of Killer Kits, I thought that's how, where it oh, needs to be. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that, that on the box. But that's very of its day. If yeah, you yeah like. and, but I would say as well, pop it in the box so you've got something to go on the wall in, you your, look, in your workshop. Yeah. Just look at these. Yeah. He did several ones of these. It's great. It's a lovely. I mean, look at that one. I mean, that's just yeah, amazing. That's but my favourite one, which was, um, I mean, look at this. I mean, uh, the still, Lost. Is it the Lost Boys? We still sell that one now. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Look we still it. sell the Lost Boys one. But you know, you've got the Captain Jack. Um, <laughs> but I, I just like the. I love Neil's style. I mean, this to me is the is the is 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 what I wanted to do. That's uh, the Batman. Here's the Batman here. Look at that. That Batman looks great. That's good, it? isn't it? Yeah. Neil did all the yeah. Neil did all the artwork on it, and then he did the graphics, which was kind of like the for us. It was our first step into um, into digit the digital size of doing mm -hmm. illustrations for the boxes. My question is, you guys are all mates. Do you like these covers, or do you, would you prefer you know would you prefer it all done digitally. Do you like the app? What about you? What's your you thing? See, well, the, the problem is when I, I put mine in a box and I put a coloured cover on it and it's got four sides and you won't get it out and it looks like a, a model kit. Yeah. But I can't send that as it is. What I have to do is then I have to package that inside another heavier box. So if I want the box to look perfect, I have to put the box in a box when I ship it, which mm -hmm. adds to the shipping cost. Or the, or the postage cost and it also adds the cost to the kit because if you're buying a really good box that you want somebody to keep and you're printing colour instructions and you're printing colour colour illustrations for the box it does add to the cost so if you're not particularly bothered about the box and you just want to build the kit you might as well say well you're gonna you know because look at that oh, it's brilliant that is basically them, isn't it? that is basically yeah. the my kill yeah. roy batty kit that was the concept that we that we, we yeah. looked the, at. This is what they call a long box. Yeah, well, we were trying uh, to mimic... Yeah, Aurora yeah. and uh, L L Lindbergh used to have that size box. So basically yeah. what we were trying to yeah. do is, they were the concepts that we were yeah. going to, mm. and the overall consensus was, if the, if the price of the kit went up... No, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah. Fair enough. Well, fair I mean, enough. you have a look at that, guys. I mean, that was the concept... That was done by a gentleman called George Jones. He did the concept. We were originally going to just do the tops and do them in like, uh, what, what do you call them, boxes? Where they top, top weighted ones, you know? Oh, uh, yeah, the hinged box. Yeah, hinged box. Yeah, so they were basically going to be like top, that. Yeah. And we didn't go with it because basically, uh, obviously the cost implications. Well, that's a considerable amount of money to, to, to custom print a box. Well, what I do is I, well, I, I I print it and then I cut it out and then I, I wrap Stick it around it the box. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, yeah. we, we probably would have gone that way, yeah. but I think with the way we were going to do it, it was going to be a flat. I mean, bearing in mind, guys, these are garage kits. They're not mass produced. No, no, so. they're not mass produced. So but, you know. go with that in the end. Uh, but the general... The general um, opinion was not to not to bother you know just to leave it as it is um there were some crackers that i thought they were fantastic some neil did some fantastic for the other stuff. but yeah so we went down there i mean one of my favorites was done by a guy called rich Hilliard and he was he was an american guy and he did that old classic of oh, there you go birth of a legend by joe no, bailey that's a lovely piece of work that isn't it so yeah so we did. We did do these for a while, guys. It's just people weren't, didn't want to, you know. Rich, Rich Hiller did that for me, and he also did the Joe Bailey Poison Ivy one. So that's the, the illustrations. So that was a gentleman called Rich Hilliard. I think he does some work for other American outlets as well. So we did actually go down that avenue, and to be fair, most for me, most people they were they were they weren't that bothered. But as you say. 
Oh, there's another one. Where, where'd you go with this one? Oh, that's really good, isn't it? That's lovely. Would you, you know, uh, I don't know. You see, if, you see the, the thing is, you see, what you could do is you build your kit, you, put, you, you back that with something quite rigid, and you stick it on a little stand and you have it behind the kit. Yeah, I suppose so. so I mean, that yeah. was a, that was a big seller, and the reason, uh, again, when I was shipping them to the states, obviously we had to. In them days, the coloured copies were more expensive, mm. but it was a case of, do you guys want to pay a bit extra for the kits, or do you want the kits to remain a similar sort of price? I mean, people tended to, honestly, they didn't. They just wanted it in a box. But anyway, 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 yeah. that was the you. That's the history of killer kits. What about this American stuff? You've got well, the Americans, I think, what they do is they use the image to promote the kit. I mean, the, there's there's this there's one the, the ghoul which is Boris Karloff by Jeff Yeager, and you can see he's used the film poster, and yeah. he's integrated his name into the film poster, which I always think is quite we, a nice idea. We own that one now. <laughs> you own that one now. Yeah. So this is what you can get from killer kits, isn't it? Yeah. So, so yeah. Basically, the guy that sold me that sent me that and said, "All you need to do, Dave, is stick your logo over the top of the rebel resin bit at the top of here." Which that's what he said. He said you don't have to do it. He said just. The beauty of these images, though, is they're out of copyright now, aren't they? I think I don't. Know. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That yeah these are well over fifty years old, so they're 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 probably out of copyright. So when you've got this sort of stuff, you can't copyright it. It's like I think even Mickey Mouse or Winnie the Pooh is out of copyright. Oh right. So yeah, they c Disney is still going to produce stuff using the image, but anybody can use them. It's like Lego now. Lego's out of copyright. Oh right. Well, a, a patent has run out, so anybody can manufacture Lego now. Oh, right. So this is one of those things that you get to a point where these uh, old film posters can become integrated with the kit because there's no there's no copyright on them anymore, and basically these films are what now that the film must be what seventy years old. Oh, flipping out. Easy. Flipping out. Nineteen thirty eight, forty. Yeah. Well, there you go. It's back to age, Dave. It is. It is. <laughs> it is. It is. That's quite nice that one. It isn't is it? very nice. Yeah. I mean, well, I, I mean, I like I like this kind of thing that happens. This is a Jack Tri Pierce tribute. No, that Jack one's Pierce. black art, yeah. Yeah, black black art, and it, he's a famous makeup designer. For anybody, you probably all know him. Most of you know him, but uh, he was a famous makeup designer. You can see he did all these. He did some of the mummy movies. He did the man that laughed and all the rest of it. I uh, know this is Doctor Sardonicus, is it? Doctor Sardonicus. Yeah. Doctor Sardonicus. No, it's like Joker thing, wasn't it? Yeah, it was very early Joker. It's a good movie actually. It's quite gruesome. And you can see that this is one of those tribute kits where you've got all the makeup around the base there. And, th and that makes a really nice little poster to advertise the kit. But also, I think if I was working on that kit, I would appreciate having this in the box because then I could just pop it on the wall. To look at it for colours. And colour. have a look at it for colours yeah, and have a look at yeah, it for some, yeah, some sort of so. I suppose this is the good thing about having all those displays th those displays at the uh, at the show, isn't it? You've mm. got a, you can come and get some inspiration. Yeah. yeah? Yeah. Now this is a what this is a kit, guys. That not a lot of not a lot of people. Sorry, Michael Caine there. Don't I? Uh, not a lot of people <laughs> have seen this, this one. Yeah. Um, this is the Captain Blake from the Fog. Uh, I, you don't see this kit anywhere. I'm not sure whether alternative images have picked this up, but I I've had the kit and something you don't see very often mm. and to be honest the kit doesn't look anything like that does it so, not i mean no. that's quite a nice little poster though isn't it i and think that the, is the kit this is the john carpenter the fog, the fog. yeah because yeah. it was remade wasn't it about yeah. 10 to 10 15 years ago that's but this is the one. this that's is the proper one, one. this proper is the john carpenter one but which is going to be pretty gruesome mm -hmm. which i quite like so yeah. that's good but yeah i mean I bill know. we're saving one of the best ones for bill in a minute but mm. this is one of my favorites because I love this kit, and if anybody's got yeah. this kit that want to trade with me, please tell me. The kit doesn't look like that. The kit is the kit is it's it's kind of like that. Again, mm -hmm. I think this is going back to what Bill said. It's the movie poster. Yeah, it's the captured kit. So if anyone's got this kit that wants to get rid of it, please contact me. Um, it's the two apes. Uh, I've had this kit in my hands three times and got rid of yeah. it due to divorces. It's, it's the two apes manhandling Taylor, isn't it? Yeah. When they catch yeah. It's, it's, it's different and, uh, from that, but it's yeah. different from that. But it's once again, it's Jeff Yeager, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely superb kit. I mean, we love ape stuff, don't we? Oh God, yeah. You know, we're, gorillas we're, with machine guns, mate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, we've got we've got a, we've got an exclusive next yeah. next week, hopefully yeah. for you. Yeah. But this but, is yeah, great. That's really really yeah. nice. But Forbidden zone, again, wasn't it? Yeah. it doesn't yeah. look like the kit actually look well you see this is a, an aurora tradition i think there was an artist called basil gogos yeah and he painted all the aurora horror kit boxes but when you got the kit out of the box it didn't look anything like what was on the box 
Mm-hmm. Since then, Jeff Yeager has been put in that right, hasn't he, by doing yeah. box art tribute ones, yeah. which are brilliant. So I've got yeah, the creature. You've got, you've got a creature. I've got you? the creature. It's like it's amazing. It's like it's like the Aurora one on steroids. I yeah. keep knocking it off and breaking things. I up. mean, this this one and yeah. the Apenauts is yeah. two mustards. I mean, the yeah. annoying part. I mean, you must have had kits that you've had. Oh yeah, and I've, I've swapped or and you think why have got rid of that? Well, there for me. Yeah, we got this one as well. Mm. This is this is a nice one. I think that's a fantastic Christopher Lee. Likeness, that isn't it? Superb. It is it? a superb one, and the way that the, the the paint up there. You see, this is why I need this in my kits. That's why I need a little poster in my kit, because Jackal's risen. Is that the one? Yeah, Jackal's risen from the grave. Yeah, uh, and I mean, if you look at it, if you look at the way that that the Christopher Lee is painted on that, if that if that was in the box with it, that would find that inspirational. Yeah. Yeah, because I'm not a painter, I, and I, and I I struggle. Mm. I, I can do it when somebody's giving me. If I've got clear instructions, I can do it. Mm. I can mimic it, yeah. but I can't do that on my, off my own bat sort of thing. Yeah. So I think to an extent, a lot of this is is well worth having. I, I that's that, but that's me. That's me. Maybe I'm just a, a collector. You see, because if I went to, I would probably take that with me to uh, <laughs> to a show, get somebody to sign it. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I'd love that. I mean, I was digging through some autographs. I've got. I've got an Ingrid Pitt autograph. Right, uh, and it, and it's just I've had it in a box for years, and it's it's on a card, you know, from a from a show. I think it was some horror con in London at Earl's Court. I think it might have been. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I've got these autographs, and I'm thinking, what would I do with it? But if I had a, a little, a nice you little, know, you know, I've got some belting autographs. Yeah, the yeah. one thing that really, really, uh, I ter- cherish a lot is I've got the Sopranos, the TV series, right, right. and it's the uh, it's a cigar uh, club. Somewhere and mm. it's a magazine cover and it looks so good and they've all signed it. Oh wow, that's brilliant, isn't it? So that's yeah. great. And I've recently a guy got me, he was a Planet of the Apes, the new apes. Uh yeah, yeah. and it mm. basically it was a it was a, a free a free magazine and you guys that live in the smoke in London, it it's on the it's on the tube. What's it? Oh, is it City Lights or something like Metro that? Or something. Metro Metro, yeah. Right. It's like a, it's like a free magazine. It's yeah. a listings mag. Yeah. yeah so yeah. basically this magazine yeah, yeah. was on the underground and it had got the new guy circus is it that plays Andy circus, it's yeah like he's Caesar, he's yeah. he's yeah. in a suit with the ape makeup, the ape makeup on, on like the original like the image, suit. Like you, no, yeah. I'm dying escape to from the planet of apes that's yeah. it so i'm yeah. dying to to get this guy to sign, sign that it. so i yeah. can have that that yeah. one as well yeah, yeah. to go with me sopranos the next up guys this is the amiga man Charlton, oh yeah yeah Charlton Charlton heston and yeah. believe it or not yeah, another Jeff Yeager. Another yeah. Jeff Yeager. Yeah. But if you look at it, it's actually a great movie. This does it's, anybody it's... else sculpt in the United States? By I don't the way. know. I don't know. But he does such a good job. But there's no reason not to have it, is it? I mean, Flip it's it. an early Jeff Yeager though. That one, I would say, that was quite That's early. That's Monsters. Early. I think Monsters in Motion do that Most one. I'm not in sure. Motion, yeah. I, I, yeah. Correct us if we're wrong, guys. Nice one. Nice one. Yeah. And then we're coming on to now. Oh yeah. This. This is this is for Bill. I'll let Bill talk about this one. Oh. Now, I'm sure who sculpted this one was this. This is this is the uh, Boris Karloff Tower of London. Yeah, by Janus. I told you the story about it. Yeah, oh, you did. <laughs> yeah, oh, superb, mate. Uh, this go. is a this is a this is a really nice bit of uh, movie trivia for you. Now, I was watching a, a tribute to uh, Vincent Price the other day on TV, and this fit, this this was featured very heavily. There was Basil Rathbone, Sherlock Holmes, mm-hmm. Vincent Price, and Boris Karloff. Slightly one of his slightly later roles, maybe nineteen forties. Mm-hmm. It was after Frankenstein, and uh, Karloff is this like bald-headed executioner. Basil Rathbone plays King Richard, mm-hmm. and uh, Vincent Price plays his brother. And it's the famous scene where he he drowns in a vat of wine, and it, and and he goes on. To, Richard goes on to kill the two princes in the tower, allegedly. But this kit, the the most striking thing is Karloff is at his most strikingly fearsome sinister In he's got one. a shaved head he's bulked up because he was quite a big guy he wasn't tall but he was broad mm-hmm. and he's got this wonderful costume that just accentuates it. he's got these like shakespearean tights and pointy mm. shoes but he's got this massive sort of iron collar on and uh, this kit is just an amazing kit i mean so that's a coincidence isn't it uh, yeah don't think you can get this anymore. Now. Can you not get this anymore? But no, there you go. So it's down as a, a Universal Monsters, Universal Studios monster. And I'm, not, I'm not even sure it was a Universal. I thought it was RKO, but it doesn't matter. I mean, the mm. fact is, it's, it's Boris Karloff. And if you look at that, 
That's great. And this is one of those things that you might have got on the box and when you were a kid, open the box. And is that the instruction sheet? That's that's basically it. So you can build them in two different ways. You've got with the mask. And without the mask. And without the mask, the alternative head. I personally I think the one without the mask. Yes. Yeah. But Boris Karloff is looking really gruesome there. Really sinister. But you see, for me, this is where it goes. Great sculpt, fantastic base. Look at that base, mate. Yeah. The base the base is as it's like it's like this, isn't it? The base plays a part plays a part in it everything's integrated so and if you and it got and it goes down to what you're saying it says it's advertising the others boys carl after ghoul lon cheney man of a thousand faces Bella Bella Lugosi, Lugosi, White White zombie. Zombie. yeah on to the next one guys this one is going back to what bill said it's kind of mimicking the uh, a movie poster if you yeah. ask me yeah yeah and this is the uh, old geometric one eighth scale michael Wolfman. Yeah, they've done like a, they've photographed a kit, but they've done it in like sepia, haven't they? Yeah. Like a sepia effect, and they've rearranged it to be like the lobby cards and the. Yeah, in, in I'd the have loved movies. that to have been one six. Yeah. Great Wolfman, that. But yeah. like I say, that that's the Mike Hill one. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got so that one came out. And I think I'm not sure that one's still available, guys, for the new Geo owners. But uh, I don't know. I'm not sure, mate. I'm not sure. But you'd have to check out with that one. Now, now this is some. This is another thing that used to come out with uh, a lot of kits because they were limited editions uh people who bought the kits wanted to know that they had a limited edition kit Enough. so yeah. so so one of the things that people used to do i'm not so don't suppose they do it that much now do they i think jeff yeager does C but certificates. certificates and this yeah. is an, a very nice old-fashioned certificate it's, it's 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 printed on parchment so it's got like a kind of antique feel and uh, yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, and it's number five. It's kit number five. I mean, a lot of these things have gone to the past. Yeah. But I know with that Jeff Yeager kit, that box art tribute uh, creature, mm. I got a certificate, and I'm not kidding you. It was a professionally printed, embossed mm. Jeff Yeager certificate. Yeah. And it wasn't just promoting the kit and the number of the kit. It was promoting the fact it was done by Jeff Yeager. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because it's a bit like it's the real deal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, therefore you get the certificate. You pay for it, but it's there, yeah. isn't it? You know. Yeah. So next up, we've got probably the last one, <laughs> which is the not really no. that one. We've got probably got the last yeah. one now. Oh yeah, yeah. Which is the man of a thousand, thousand faces. faces. Lonchani senior. A little bit doggy. Yeah. You can see where that's been on the wall. Phantom of the Opera, Once Back in Notre Dame, London After Midnight. Again, the Janus logo at the Janus, bottom. Yeah. yeah. And this is. Um, and is it a Jaeger piece again? I don't know, but it's a beautiful piece. I of think work, Jaeger, Jeff should be paying us to, for the promotion we're giving him on this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But it is a lovely kit. Isn't I think it, it is. I, mean, yeah. it's I a think it's Jeff Jaeger, yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure it is. Uh, Man of a Thousand yeah, Faces. Man of a Thousand Faces. Yeah. But yeah, that's the original yeah. box cover. So that one was. Yeah, it's a big box, that, isn't it? It was a big kit, that. Yeah, I mean, you can the, see the, it. It's, it's, it was. Was it held on? It probably just held on. Did you. Did, that's been on the wall. That's been on the wall, hasn't it? Yeah. It's exactly what I was saying. It's it's the inspiration, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, that's been on yeah. the wall. But the bottom line with that is, I think it was so popular. And then what it did is, it went the, the price just went through the, through roof, the roof of it. Yeah. And because Janice was no longer in existence, now that kit is is, I think Janice. I think there's a gentleman um, in the states that bought the molds off his wife, mm -hmm. and he basically reissued the Jack Pierce one. Yeah, yeah, and then I think Sol Alvarez, uh, shout out to Sol, mm -hmm. he's done a bust of this where he's it's, it's kind of like comes to there, which yeah. is quite a nice piece. And he's got the makeup, he's got the toolbox in his hand, and he's, he's kind of got you imagine he's got that and the tool, the toolbox, so he's he's kind of bust of it. I think Sol did it because mm. we were sick of not being able to get this, so he filled the void there. Um, yeah, nice, nice, nice kit, really nice, really nice done. And they're the busts that were out of it there, yeah. Uh, um, the thing is about Lon Chaney Senior, he did his own makeup, didn't he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. all of these were his own creations. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, uh, because I mean, a lot of this stuff is now owned by Universal. Yeah. But only by accident. It's yeah, actually so it's should Lon be Chaney one. Should be Lon Chaney's. But yeah, so that's yeah. that. That was what we used to do in our day. The question I'm going to ask you guys is, yeah. Box art or not box art? Instructions or not, not illustrations? To summary. Yeah. What's your summary on it? My summary is 
I think anything with more than six parts needs instructions. <laughs> yes, I do. I do in a sense for, for 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 me. For me, it's about it's about creating the the kit, the experience, uh, the experience. So I'm selling a bit of experience as well. But to be honest with you, if I if I was buying like uh, Lost Boys Bust, mm -hmm. I'd I'd be just happy with that in the box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, from a producer's perspective, um, people are saying to me it, it depends whether it's a collectible yeah, or that's it, whether it? it's a model yeah, kit. Yeah, collectible or model So kit. if you're collecting boxes and collecting collectibles, mm -hmm. then yes, go the extra mile, go the extra two minutes, do everything you can to get everything sorted. We do, we've do. we got a limited edition kit coming out uh at the end of this year we will have box covers i'm going to try and convince this man to do the box out for me the the uh, illustration uh, uh, instructions. Can, I, can i do the instructions yeah 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 i'd I love you to do, do it instructions yeah yeah <laughs> i'd love so, to do some instructions yeah yeah, yeah. i love doing instructions yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I, was, I was gonna ask you after last week oh, yeah, i was yeah, gonna ask you yeah, so yeah. we we make yeah. the effort but as a rule it's it's whether collector or painter now, unfortunately, yeah. all this good bump and goodies and extras, they all come at a cost because yeah. the kit then commands an higher premium. And it, sometimes it prices people out in my experience. So yeah. you be the judge, guys. If you want the whistles and bells, yeah. that's great. I'm all for that. I think it looks fantastic. And there's some mm -hmm. fantastic kits out yeah. there that have got all the whistles and bells, but you pay that premium price for them kits. Uh, with me, in my experience, people have asked me, uh, and I asked the question, do you want the bells and whistles? 90% aren't that no, bothered. No, that's true. Fair enough. But it's whether yeah. you're a collector or a kit painter. A kit painter, yeah. So what's your audience? My audience is collectors. They keep the boxes. They keep the boxes off the old Aurora kits. They keep the boxes yeah. off my kits. They keep yeah. the boxes off. I, I, that work I was doing for Aurora the other week with yeah. that uh, giant Irish elk yeah. instructions... The guys that buy that, they they, they, they they want that Aurora experience. They want that. Just oh, to remind them what it was like in 1972 when they opened up their box. Right, okay. But that's part and parcel of it, and that just, it does cost extra. Do you think that if you get all the bits and pieces, it, you're making that extra effort, or is it just a different market? I think to an extent it's a slightly different market, but the other thing it does is it presents the actual buyer with a problem because they think then think, this is a lovely box. I don't want to throw it away. What am I going to do with it? So like me, we were talking earlier and I, and I was saying about cutting mm. open the boxes and flattening them out and putting them in a folder. Mm. So that's what I do with my boxes. Because mm. if I've got a, an Aurora box, which like I was saying, which is like 50 years old, I don't want to put it in the bin. Mm. And it, it might already be a partly built kit. So the kit is not collectible because it's already partly done by somebody mm. years ago and I've got hold of it. Yeah. I'm going to keep the box because I just love to... Sometimes I just like... Yeah, go, it's kit sniffers, isn't it? I just like coming through the instructions, going, "Oh, I remember doing that in nineteen Oh, an airfix Spitfire, yeah. you know that kind of thing. Oh, right. Yeah. So I've got them. I've got them. And as a kid, I would cut them out. Yeah. And I would put them on my wall. I'd have a mosquito fighter bomber, you know, that sort of stuff, like Warlord magazine yeah. and things. I was, I was obsessed with it. <laughs> you know. So but let us let yeah. let us know, guys, in the comments below. Are you a kit collector and just want yeah, to build and paint them? Is, yeah, is there a difference between a kit collector and a kit and a, and a builder? Does this, does this, does this, yeah, is, that's are you a good both? question. That's are good, you both? That's a good question. Are you both? Yeah, are you a kit Do collector? Do you ever buy a kit and not make it? Are you, buy, yeah. make are you buying yeah. these kits for for investment purposes yeah. Yeah. or are you buying these to paint them? Yeah. That's the question, guys. That's a good question. I'll get you talking, I hope. Uh, to me, we, we like to do... I'd look, we'd like to do special ones every so often because mm. that makes it special. special. If you do it all like the, the time. the Christmas edition of yes, Only Fools and Horses. that's the one. <laughs> the Christmas edition. Or, Christmas or, or, edition. Or the summer, yeah, yeah. The, going back to yeah. Bill's Beano, the summer, summer special. special. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the summertime special. So yeah, do yeah. you want... Do you feel better, guys, <laughs> if, you, if you think, right, we're going to have a special one this year yeah. and it gets all the bells and whistles or, or do you want it all the time? Yeah. It's like eating ice cream all the time and get fed no, up with, you it, get fed with it. Yeah, what do you, what do you guys think? I mean, this is, yeah, yeah. It, we, don't, we don't want to offend anybody. We're just putting the question. No, we're getting people talking. Yeah, yeah. We're trying to get thing, We're trying to get some sort of dialogue going, guys. But but that's what the question is today, yeah. which I thought was interesting yeah. after last week when, when you were talking about yeah. that. You liked it. You loved I, it. You love your box art. You love your box, box art. Yeah, but now I'm thinking, 
you've that's a question you've asked now is like because i've got i build kits and i do but i've also got a lot of kits that i will never build now i'm starting to think there what am i going to do with those kits now? exactly are you a, are you a painter a kit painter or a kit collector that's I the have question. to say, if if it comes please purely down to numbers with me, I'm a collector. You're a collector. So yeah. please, guys, yeah. tell me in the comments below yeah. whether you're a collector or a painter. You know what I mean, guys? That's what yeah. I want to know. Where's he a collector? Oh, do you because are oh, you just collecting the boxes? Because there's a school of thought that kits are meant to be built. Well, that's what they're there for. They're meant to be built. Built. You know, you you often see on the on the boards, you've got this like pristine, still sealed kit. Of a nineteen sort of like sixties, uh, I don't know, jet plane yeah. on the Aurora boards, and they say, "I've got this mint," and somebody will say, "Open it, build it." That's what kits are for. But mm. this poor bloke's probably spent hundred quid on this, and he's thinking, "Are they gonna have? Are they ever gonna make you a shed load of money?" Though? Never, no. So because when you sell, really because when you sell them either. on with kits, I've found when I sell them on, the years later. If I allow for inflation, the occasional time I do sell kits, because I'm obsessively about collecting them, if I do sell a kit on, like I did the other day, I sold a kit through, through, through uh, what's it called? Etsy. Uh, uh, Etsy. I sold the kit, and I thought, oh, that's quite a bit of money. I've spent a bit of, I've got a bit of money off that. And then I actually looked at how much I paid for it, what, 20 years ago? It's probably, probably about and, the same. And, I, and it's probably, I've just probably broken even. It's a bit like putting money on the national. That's it, guys. Yeah. That's it. So, are you a kit collector or a, a kit painter? Painter and builder. That's up to you, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Please let us know in the comments below. Yeah, I'm interested with this. It's, it's a sociological good to, experiment. It is, isn't it? It's, <laughs> it is. It is. It is. It's good to have Bill back, even yeah. though he's a bit under the weather. A bit under the weather, like, you know. We'll see you next week, guys. Thanks for liking the videos. Yep. All the comments are great. All the guys across the pond, great look. Just stay tuned for the end of the video. Yeah, there's more to come. More to come. Yeah. Like I say, new guy putting his. Your new young sculptor, fresh on the scene. Give him plenty of love, guys. Mm -hmm. He's a smashing fella. He's gonna he's gonna show it later in the scheme. So take care, guys. Cheers. Hello, everybody. We're here across the pond in the U.S. to do another episode. Where we are surfing to the U.S.A. <laughs> In our Hawaiian shirts. Hope you guys all Beautiful like day out too, so it seems really fitting now. So we have a character here that uh, we're very anxious to show you guys here. This is from Giovanni Zorloza, Zorloza Creation. His, his, his vision right here. This character was done quite a few years ago. Uh, it's his own, not off a movie. It, the name of the, the character is Lucificus. And it's a demon little demon that he did I uh, not really little obviously it's a kit comes in 10 parts and actually the the base was the first thing when I built a rotocaster for Giovanni that uh, we did in the rotocaster was this base so that was kind of interesting uh, on the base down here I'm gonna get up to show you there's Arabic writing if you can see it there on the base and that's ancient Arabic writing. And what that means is this actually came off, they investigated and they got this off of an old grave. So interesting little fact there. But it, the saying says, it says, behold and see as you pass by as you are now. So once I was, I am now. You soon shall be. Prepare for death and follow me. So, heavy and dark. <laughs> but that's what it means. So, I love the accuracy of it, though. <laughs> it's really cool that he put that in there. I painted this one. I, I chose a, a burning ember look. Uh, I actually went off of what I thought was a neat look of the burning child, right? The bur burning children from Silent Hill. That's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, the beginning of the embers, old. burnt embers coming out in them. So uh, that's how I approached this one with that color. I mean, obviously you can do it in multiple ways. Um, but I thought you guys would all get a kick out of seeing this one. Because it's one that just does not get enough uh, exposure, if you ask me. And it's a, it's a fabulous piece. So, And the interesting part about uh, 
this piece is that uh, he took uh, reference size references of his son posing on the table, which is really neat. His oldest son when he was eight years old. So it, and and so I mean it's, he done it, did this probably ten plus years ago, but uh, more so available. More but mine, I love it. Yeah. So, so it, it, it say this kit is still available. So uh, it's a big one though. Requires a lot of space. Um, so. If you like demons and gargoyles and all sorts of stuff like that, I mean, this is a must-have piece right here. Also, this kit has uh, some up-and-coming, this character, I should say, has some up-and-coming uh, movie. It's a little short movie, right? Well, it's, he's, Giovanni's working on, yeah, it's going to be, a, it's actually going to be a movie about him, so he's doing. So I don't want to say any more about that than that's, that's his thing, but that's, I don't want to give any spoiler alerts, but... Uh, yeah, so that'll be coming up. Excited to see that when it comes out. Uh, hopefully, he's hoping by the end of next year. So we'll see. But uh, anyway, and we're going to go on to our next piece. With our next piece, this is a really cool one. Uh, George A. Romero's Night, Night of the Living Dead 1990. The Grave Ghoul Zombie. Scott Kelly's Alternative Images. This is a real cool piece right here. That was sculpted by Brian McGuire. McGuire, McGuire yeah. Yep. Is that right, McGuire? Yep, McGuire. That's McGuire. Yep. Cool box art right here. I have an 8 by 10 picture of this in a frame. This, this zombie scared the hell out of me as a kid. That was all done by uh, uh, Tom Savini, too, on that one, wasn't it? Yeah, he, he directed it. Which was really cool. But I mean, he did the makeup on it. Yep, yeah, it was too. him and his, his team. Uh, actually, one of the team members played as a zombie. I don't remember his name, but... Is that all bubble wrapped up still? Or? Yeah, there's bubble wrap in it. So, oh, and a good old infamous... Gotta love the popcorn. So, let's see. That, Different pieces. Yeah, take that. There Here's his body. That yeah, body in the head. That's a one six scale. Yeah. He's got beautiful, that, beautiful skull. That's too where she uh, where she stuck him with the uh, cross, the mm -hmm, right garden. in his shoulder. Yeah. yeah, and so that's in here too, and that that goes Let's on. See, so there's these are the arms, both arms, and then the base is at the bottom. Where's the head? Heads right here. Yeah, that's his head. Didn't look familiar at first. Just a grass landing face. Cool, dude, so you have to add the hair on. Yeah, that, that's a piece you have to add the hair on to. Here's a close up of the head. Here's the hair right here. Cool piece. You got the same one, don't you? I and do. Your stash, yeah. Well, I do. We both have that one. Awesome piece. I love the, the zombie. It was one of the very cool. Zombies. I remember as a kid, Dad had this on a VHS, and uh, every time, Gold VHS. I am going back to the VHS retro times. I remember the rotary dial phone. You had this on VHS, and I remember going over to Jeremy Chapman's house, and I bring that and Pumpkinhead, but we'd watch Night of the Living Dead 1990 every time I go over there. So this is one of the movies that uh, the beginning scene just always sticks with me, The Great Pool. Always a really scary zombie. Him and Arthur Grimsdyke. Really creepy. So if you're interested in this piece at all, uh, contact uh, Scott Kelly of Alternative Images, and he can hook you up on it. And for our last piece here, and I'm going to let Steve, since he was the sculptor of this, talk mostly about it. A uh, huge fan of this movie. Um, and I was thinking, you know, I had all these envisions in my head of what character I could sculpt, and... When I was about four or five, I remember Scream was really, really big and it made a huge impact on me. 
And uh, I just thought that was him six years in a row for Halloween. And I thought, what better than to do Ghostface? And uh, him making a huge impact in 21 with the last two movies that came out, five and six. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna sculpt him. So I did it to where you could do, you could do a mural on the back of him. That was my idea. Right up there. Good to see it. <laughs> and I haven't really seen anything done in, in resin form. Very little. So that's a that's a good hefty. Uh, I'd say good, it's a bigger one four. Yeah, bigger. Yeah, it's a bigger one fourth one. It's about what, nine to ten, almost ten inches tall. Nine inches. Yeah, that's a give or take. So it's right in there, but it's it's a beefy one. Uh, it's hollow cast. So it's not a, a shelf breaker or nothing like that. Um, I'm really proud of how it turned out. And uh, anybody who's a slasher fan, I think will love this. So this is available. You can contact myself, Kirk Cullimore, and uh, we can hook you up with one. Now, as far if you're over overseas in the in the UK, there yeah, the European market. Just contact Dave, Dave Nicholson. Yes. Dave will hook you up. Dave, Dave will also be uh, producing this. this this kit here. So uh, that makes it easier. He's right there. So that saves on shipping and everything. But in the U.S. here, you can contact me uh, and we can hook you up with this. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Yeah, you guys take care and uh, have a great day, huh?